Welcome to my channel, Crafts by KMW. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you will enjoy this video, which is a tutorial for how you can use chalk pastels in your coloring book pages for backgrounds. I've been using chalk pastels for most of my backgrounds for about a year now, and I absolutely love it. My backgrounds get finished so much faster. They are blended better. I can get better effects, like when I want to do a sunset with different colors, like yellows and oranges and pinks and purples and reds, I can get really great blendability with hardly any effort at all, unlike with pencils. And backgrounds that would take me about six hours to complete with pencil take me about an hour or less to complete in chalk pastel. And I say that is a good thing. So first I'm going to show you the pastels that I have. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you some techniques for using them. And then I'm going to color a background in one of my coloring books. So the first set that I have is this Soft Pastel for Artists by Essel. I got this on Amazon. It was about $13. It says it has 64 colors, but it really doesn't. Um, there's about... 58 I would say in there because there are multiple blacks and multiple whites which is fine because those are colors that I use and probably most people use most often. So as you can see these are small sticks and I love the small sticks. They last just about as long as the longer ones and they are super easy to hold and control. You don't have to worry about them breaking off as you're using them. Now mine are kind of messed up. They've gotten knocked on the floor several times by my cat, but um, one thing I love about these is that no matter how small the piece is, you can still use it until it is all gone. So you really get your money's worth with these with chalk pastels in general. So the next set that I have is the Alpha Color, and I believe these are by Derwent, although it doesn't say Derwent on the packaging. When I bought them on Amazon, it did say Derwent. So these are 24 sticks, and these are the portrait um, set. So these are all colors that you could use for skin tone and hair um, when coloring people. So you can see I haven't used these a whole lot, but um, I really like the colors that there are. They're great for skin tones. I have colored some skin tones with them in a few of my Tanya Bond books, my Inkling coloring books, and they're really great. Again, chalk pastels are great for blending, so they're really nice to color skin tones with because you can really blend and get that smoothness that you want. You can see a couple of my sticks have broken. Um, they broke while while I was using them, but you can still use the broken parts, so it doesn't really matter. And these are pretty high quality. I think they were, I cannot remember at all how much I paid for these. Um, I believe they had a 12 piece set as well and they have different um, color sets. So I think they have a pastel, I think they have an earth tone set. So you could get the set that you would like to um, use and have the colors that you need. And then the last set of pastels I have are these Carb Othello um, pastel pencils. And these are by Stabilo. I have the 48 set. They come in smaller sets. I think you can get 12, 24, 36, and then they have a larger set of 60. These are kind of expensive, and that's why I went with the 48 set and not the 60. I wasn't sure I was really going to like them, and 
the 60 set is about a hundred dollars which i thought was a little steep so this set was I think it's about 58 regular price. I got it for around 50. I bought it when they had him on sale. So these are basically color pencils, but they are chalk. So you can use them the same way as a color pencil, but you get really good blendability. And I really like them because you can get in small areas um, where it might be harder to get into with a stick. So it gives you a lot more control than um, a stick will. This brand is available open stock, so you can get them um, individually as you use them out, but they last a really long time. I've colored with these a bunch of times. I've used the black quite a few times, and as you can see, it is still pretty um, long, so um, you can really get a lot of use. So this one I used countless times and I still have a good chunk of it. So even though they're pastel, they still last a long time. I do not have any pan pastels. That is another kind of pastel. They come in um, round, like compacts. That kind of remind me of a makeup, um, like a foundation or a powder compact. Those are about $8 for one. <laughs> so they're a little bit beyond what I want to spend for chalk pastels because in my use of them, I found that the price that you pay really doesn't matter. Um, the quality of the chalk pastels across different brands and price points, I think is pretty much the same. Some of them may have more dust than others. And if you are someone who has asthma or lung concerns, you may want to avoid these or wear a mask when you are using them. Um, I find that if I just brush them off or blow them off really lightly, um, I can avoid inhaling all the dust. Sometimes I do wear a mask if I'm going to be using them a lot. Some um, of my coloring pages are 11 by 14. Um, I print my PDFs on 11 by 14 paper. So those obviously have more space to color. So I will often wear a mask if I'm coloring those with chalk pastels because I'm gonna get a lot more dust than I will on a smaller um, 10 by 10 or eight and a half by 11 coloring book. But um, by far, um, you can get whatever um, price point of pastel you'd like and they will work just fine and give you great results. So before I get to my coloring page, I just want to show you a little bit of, of how I use them. So there are different ways to use them. Um, you will see many artists um, will use them where they will take the stick and they use a knife, a razor to scrape off the color and then they spread it around on their page, either with their fingers or with an applicator. Um, I prefer to just take the chalk pastel and color on the page. So I just put it on its side and I just color. Now it's getting sort of a funny, um, <laughs> sort of a funny um, dimpling effect because I'm using it on my table, which is which is a little bit uneven. But if I were to use it on in a book, it would look totally flat. So you can see how fast you can color a large um, space in a very short amount of time. So now I just wanna show you some blending. So I'm going to take a darker green and I'm just gonna come next to this with the darker green. 
And now I'm going to take my eyeshadow applicator. So I love eyeshadow applicators. I use double-sided ones. These I bought on Amazon. I think I got a pack of 100 for like $4 or actually it was under $4, which is a steal. And I found that these were really good quality and last really long. You get four heads on each one, so you can really get a lot of use out of each one. I found that they do not um, rip or disintegrate, so um, I really, really like these. But you can use anything. I've used cotton balls. I've used tissue. I've used my finger. I've used um, ink applicators, so I have some of these that I use for my inks when I use my stencils. And these work just great too, and the chalk washes out pretty easily, so you can use brushes, you can use whatever you have on hand and whatever you would like. So now I'm just going to blend the two colors. And as I get further into the darker color, you can see that it's getting darker. And then I will either use the same um, side or I will use a different side. And then as I come on this side, it's lighter. So you get that nice really pretty smooth blend between the two colors. And you don't have that um, line going across like you often do with colored pencils, no matter how much you burnish, no matter how many layers you use, no matter what kind of colorless blender you use, whether it be a colorless blender pencil or um, Gamsol or whatever, there's always some kind of line with colored pencil. So that's why I really like these. You can get really beautiful effects really simply. And I did that in seconds. So now that I've shown you that, I am going to pull out my book. So I am using Mythic World by Kirby Rosans, and I'm currently working on this page. This is the Druk. It is a mythical dragon creature, and I have actually colored this entire page so far with only chalk pastels except for the dragon. I did not have a magenta colored chalk um, that was the exact color that I wanted for the dragon. I was just, I just had a certain image of the color in my head and um, the colors of pastels I have are a little bit too pink and so um, I use color pencils on this guy, but everything else is going to be chalk pastels. So even though I'm not finished with the page, I'm going to go ahead and do the background so you can see the background being done with pastels. So I am going to make this sort of a um, fiery background to show the impact of this guy on the environment around him. So um, I imagine that this illustration is showing him where he's just kind of coming out from the mountain or out from behind the mountain and terror is going to start ensuing and that is going to definitely be reflected in the sky and in the background. So, um, and I think this will be great for you to see um, how you can get around really small Area. So I have, there's some really tiny, thin lines here, small areas that I need to get around. 
um, and you can see me do that. So I am going to use mostly my um, small sticks. So I was thinking that I would use a um, like a pink and a purple for the background. Um, so I have a light pink and I always keep a piece of paper handy so I can do a test to make sure that the colors that I choose are actually the colors that I want. Um, yeah, I think I like that. The purple will be on the edges. So I think, I think I like that. All right, so these are my three colors. So you could use whatever colors you want. You do not use, need to use the same colors that I am using at all. So since this is a double-sided book, I have taken a piece of wax paper and laid it on the page um, next to it, the next page, so I don't get anything on it and mess that up. And it's also a great place for me to put my chalks while I am using them so I can put them down and have them right close next to me. So I'm going to start with the lightest color first. And I'm getting as close as I possibly can. In areas that are really tight, like this area here, and I'll come down and zoom in for you. I'm just gonna put a little bit there. So a little bit of chalk goes a long way. You do not need to apply it really heavy or a ton. You also don't need to apply it really um, close to your um, image or your images because you can you will spread it out with your applicator so you don't have to um, worry about that. So it's really safe. You don't have to worry about the fact that you're going to color on anything else and ruin any part of your image. So now in this little area here, I'm just going to use the edge of it and just go in there very lightly. And then I'm just going back over what I did to make sure I get good saturation. So again, I use the edges of the stick when I'm going into tight spaces. So you could blend this out if you wanted to, but I am going to go right ahead and do my middle color. Sorry, I'm kind of futzing with my, <laughs> my camera arm, so I apologize for that. So now I'm gonna use the darker pink. And just like you would a colored pencil, I'm going over that lighter pink just a little bit. 
and next to it. Not covering it, but going right over it. And again, I'm just going to go back over it to make sure I have good saturation. <clears throat> You don't have to be exact. That's another thing I really love about using chalks. You can just get it on there. You don't have to um, be precise like you do with pencils because you're gonna blend all this out and it will look really smooth. So now I'm taking my final color, my purple, and I'm going to fill in all of the white space that is left over. Now you may, and I forgot to say this earlier, you may want to put something underneath your page to protect previous pages from getting any chalk dust on them. I didn't do it sim this time simply for aesthetic purposes because I'm making a video, but normally I would. I would put um, a piece of paper or wax paper under there. Now it's a little bit harder getting into the center. Um, Kirby's books are bound really well. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> I think different people have different opinions of that. And one thing, you don't have to worry about getting too far into the center because you can um, get in there a little bit closely with your applicator. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure this is a little bit darker. All right, so now is where the magic happens. <laughs> so I am going to grab an applicator. Oh, okay, there they were, they were under my book, all right. Now, I always start with the lightest color first and blend out to the darkest color. Um, if you start with the darkest color and go in, you're going to bring that darker color onto your lighter colors and contaminate it. So if you want your lighter colors to show up, you want to do them first. So I'm just taking my eyeshadow applicator and just blending out and spreading out the chalk. And I love this part. It is so much fun seeing it turn out or evolve or change from that <laughs> from that scribbled mess to this a really smooth beautiful color and with the eyeshadow applicators I really like them because you can get pretty close to your image um, and not color over it. And what I do when I get the dust is I keep going over it and I grind it into I just keep grinding it into the paper. And I find that that helps me to have less dust. So you can see I have barely any dust on this part because 
I just kept going over it and grinding it in there. So you just want to keep just pushing it into the paper and then you have less to get rid of and blow away. It also helps you get the most out of your chalks because you are using most of the dust. Okay. I've touched a little bit of the purple, so I'm getting a little bit of the contamination, but that's actually okay. All right, so now that I have all my pink parts. I'm gonna go back and now blend out my purple. And then I just make sure to go over it with the pink or go over the purple with the pink go over the pink with the purple a little bit so I get that nice blend sometimes I'll go in a circular motion when I'm close to a part of the image and that allows me to go a little bit carefully and helps me to avoid coloring um, on anything that I don't want to color on. And I've been able to get right in there, right in the center with my applicator. So I don't have any open space that I haven't colored in the, in the center binding of the page. So that's the page so far. Let me go up a little bit. So you can see the whole thing. <clears throat> so now I'm going to use a new side of um, the applicator. And I'm just gonna go over everything again. This time really focusing on blending the colors. Getting a gradual change from the light pink to the dark pink to the purple.
So I think that's looking really beautiful. And I'm just going to add a little bit more chalk around the major areas, not in the small, the small areas, but just in the wider open areas. I'm just going to add a little bit more chalk and a little bit more of the pink. Now a little bit more of that magenta. Tiny bit more of the purple. And as you can see, I did not do it perfectly. I did not go over every inch. I just did it very lightly, um, very haphazardly, I guess you could say. And now I'm going to blend again. Again, I'm starting with the lighter areas first and then going out. Now, if you have little parts of your page that you really don't want to go into with the chalk, um, for example, you have colored something white and you don't want to contaminate it. You can use colored pencil to get really up close to your lines of your um, illustration. I have done that many times. So especially if it's black. Um, I will just get as close as I can to the image and then I will just take a colored pencil or even one of my chalk pencils because the chalk pencils can be used without blending. Um, so I will just use one of those and then I can get really close up to the edge without getting any contamination. So there is the background. So I am going to, at this point, add a little bit of yellow just around um, the edges of the mountain. And at the top. And it's great because usually lighter colors of chalk will go right over darker colors. Um, unlike colored pencils where it's really hard to get lighter colors to go on top of darker colors. So now again, I'm going to take a fresh side of my applicator. And just blend blend that out and blend it in. Okay. Just gives it a little bit of highlight and that part I'm not totally happy with. I'm gonna do this a little bit darker. So you can easily add more color wherever you need to at any time. 
um, chalk pastels will not damage the paper, fray the paper. So you can add as much as you want, as often as you want of your color. And um, you don't have to worry about your paper pilling or getting damaged or whatever. And now once again, I'm just taking a new side or new head and I'm just blending everything out once again. Okay. So that is my finished chalk pastel background. I hope that you like it. I love it. It's exactly what I had in my head. Um, it looks very fiery and um, still blends in with the color palette that I've selected for the page and it evokes um, the feeling that this thing is disturbing the, the sky and the environment, which is what I was going for. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you will um, try chalk pastels if you haven't. Um, and let me know in the comments if you do try it, how it works, if you used any different techniques that I didn't use. Please um, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It helps more than you know. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this, more tutorials, more color alongs, and more coloring book flip throughs. Thank you so much for watching. Have a absolutely super casual, fragilistic, expialidocious day and keep on coloring.